Judging. This word, when used in the church, is often misused and misunderstood. In today's society, it seems that whenever you have a position or view contrary to someone else about the way they live or how they act, it is spoken against as if it's not to be done. Today, the church has a false expectation that if a person has a negative opinion, that they must keep it to themselves. They have this opinion because we live in the times of satanic doctrine that promotes do what thou wilt, do what you want. Today, if you are a Christian that actually has a negative opinion about the actions taken today and hold by society, then people feel that you are judging. And many Christians believe the Bible teaches us that Christians should not judge. So then people feel that we are hypocrites and are not accurately following our faith. While the Bible does teach us not to judge, we need to completely understand what judging the Bible is speaking of. Now, this topic normally gets denounced within the body, because like I said, there seems to be some kind of teaching in the church today that says none of us are able to judge one another. And honestly, it's because of this kind of teaching that a third of the world population can claim belief in Yahshua while living lives that completely say the opposite. In my video about Kanye West, while there were many that understood what I was trying to say, there was a large number of believers that said, who are we to judge? And this teaching must be corrected and understood. More biblically based clarity must be given. So what I want to do is give some biblical understanding of judgment. Because if we are to be stewards of the kingdom of Elohim, if as an assembly we are responsible for preaching the good news and being the righteousness of Elohim, that we must understand what that means and how this is to be. We are going to talk about judging. Let's begin. Okay, so let's talk about judging. Let's talk about what the normal view in the church is today. It's very simple, and it is spoken in many different ways, but it's summed up by the phrase, don't judge. So many people like to use this statement, but what has happened is that they have taken scriptures and placed them in isolation without context. And because they see, don't judge, they feel that this is how they should treat everything. Let's look at some of the scriptures people like to use. A big one is when Yahshua was giving his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. He said, Judge not, that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, people love using the scripture because of the very first, judge not, that you be not judged. But after that, context is never really understood. Before we go into context, it should be noted that in reference to judging, that even in these scriptures, Yahshua said, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will clearly see how to remove the speck from your brothers. So obviously, if you have moved past many things and removed the planks from your eyes, then you will be able to help your brother or sister with the smaller things they are dealing with. So a believer trying to help deter someone from sin should be encouraged to do so, not in condemnation or hate, but through patience and love and guidance through the Holy Spirit. Another scripture used is James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. It says, Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? And from verses like this, people feel that you shouldn't judge. But what kind of judging are they referring to? Because if we live our lives not having conviction against sin, how are we to be proclaimers of the gospel? How are we to be the salt of the earth, giving it its flavor? Psalm chapter 97 verse 10 says, you who love Yahweh hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. So if we hate evil and bring people to repentance, 
how are we to do this without having an opinion on actions within the church? If a man in my church is a murderer and I speak against it, am I judging him? Should I not do that? Or if a man is a pedophile and I allow him to continue in his sin, am I doing what is right because I'm not supposed to judge? This is a clear example that we see in present day in the Roman Catholic Church. The majority on the outside know that it is wrong and they speak against it. They are in fact judging. So obviously, not judging is deeper than what we are speaking about. First, understand that the judging that is being spoken of in these scriptures is not the same judging that many are speaking of today. The judging that is spoken about in these scriptures is a giving a death penalty or condemning one to hell. In the Torah, Israel was allowed to stone and put men to death that were great sinners against the Torah. Here are some examples. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in the land, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. That's Leviticus chapter 20 verses 1 and 2. For everyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. That's Leviticus chapter 20 verse 9. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 12. Go on and read verse 13. I didn't put it in the video because the world would take the video down just because I even mentioned it. If a man marries a woman and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burned with fire, both he and they, that there may be no wickedness among you. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 14. I can keep going with examples of this, but I hope you get the point. This was the judgment that was being done and that was spoken against in these scriptures. It's not that there is no longer any conviction against sin. That's ridiculous. But that we should no longer kill and condemn because of the sins. Because now that there is forgiveness of sins and the power of the Holy Spirit is at work, even today a great sinner can be redeemed. And if we judge and kill before we have given our father a chance to be redeemed, then we are being the lawgiver when there actually is only one. And if this was truly the case, then many of us would already be dead because we were sinners, great sinners early in our lives. That's why a believer should never believe in the death penalty. You are taking the power of Elohim away. It's ironic because the death penalty is something that a majority of Christians today actually do not speak against. If a man committed multiple homicides and was found guilty in a state that has the death penalty, his life could be taken from him. But this judgment is not rebuked against in the church. And hypocritically, while the death penalty is accepted, the church then speaks against those that speak against immorality inside the church. Those that speak against sins are rebuked for judging. It's hypocritical. Just Sunday, October 27th, Donald Trump gave a speech telling the world that him and his administration had finally found the leader of ISIS and that he was killed. He boasted that in this man's final hour, he was whimpering and crying and died as a coward. He died after running into a dead-end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. And then hypocritically, you start hearing from the many Christian Trump supporters. They were praising Trump for killing this man. Now, do not confuse me. I am not a sympathizer to ISIS or anything that that man, al-Baghdadi, or whatever his name was, I am not a sympathizer of any of his actions. But when we praise the killing of a man, we have turned into an extremely cold society. We have become judges and are taking away Elohim's power. We say that these men are irredeemable. But while this happened, the church, so hypocritically, will praise the judgment and killing of one man, but then in return, will rebuke and attack those that don't fully believe in Kanye's conversion. They hypocritically say, you don't believe God can change a man? You are limiting God's power. But in the next breath, they support full judgment on a man that can never be taken away. The point I am making is that the judgment that we are not to do is executing someone for their sins or condemning them to hell for it. There is righteous judgment that should be done at all times. Yahshua said, 
in John chapter 7, verse 24. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So judging is something that really needs to be understood because today it is totally twisted. It's reversed. We judge the way that we should not judge, but then don't judge the way that we should. Hope that wasn't confusing. Satan has twisted this topic of judgment that says that we cannot speak against sin within the church. He has told the masses that if we do this, that we are judging. And as the days, months, and years go on, those that are against sin, that are against false prophets and false teachers, they are condemned by the very people that they are trying to protect and preserve. There are so many people today that call themselves a believer. They say that they believe in Jesus Christ, but they sin greatly. They speak with wickedness and are devil's advocates more than they are advocates of righteousness. And if you try to speak with them about sin, they tell you, you can't judge me. And then they give verses like the one I used earlier. This is something that happens to me often when I'm speaking with family and friends and trying to convict against sin. But it's not unbelievers. It's those that say that they believe in Yahshua. But the truth is, I'm not judging them or condemning them. I'm not throwing stones ready to cancel them for their sins. So the question is, as believers of salvation through Yahshua the Messiah, as stewards of the kingdom of Elohim, how are we to deal with immorality in the church? The good news is that scripture speaks about this explicitly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul covers dealing with immorality in the church. Let's listen to what he said. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife, and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I indeed, as absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged, as though I were present, him who has so done this deed. In the name of our Adon, Yahshua HaMashiach, when you are gathered together, along with my spirit, with the power of our Adon, Yahshua HaMashiach, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Adon Yahshua. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet, I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, or covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, Elohim judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1-13. through 13. Okay, so let's tackle this whole thing. So Paul was writing because in the church at Corinth, it was reported that there was a man who was sleeping with his father's wife. But he said that the church was puffed up because they had not taken this man from among them. Now in your own minds, quickly just bring this up in context today. If the Apostle Paul was alive today and brought this up to the church, he would have been immediately rebuked with people saying that he was judging. Just understand exactly how different things are from the early days of the church. Anyways, he said the church should have removed this man. He said even though he was not there, he had already judged this man. What he told the church to do was to deliver him to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that he might be saved. Now, it's important to understand that he did not say that this man was not redeemable and that he could not be saved. He also did not say stone this man because he sinned. And you have to remember, this was something that Paul used to do. He persecuted those he felt were blasphemers. He did this to the church before he found Yahshua. 
Paul's instruction was to deliver the man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. When they sent that man away out of the church, he would then see how wrong he was. If he truly cared about Elohim's kingdom, he would see the error in his ways. That's what delivering him to Satan was. Think about it. Why do parents put their children in time out? They want them to think about their actions and to not do them again. Paul then said, your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? He is saying that when we tolerate just a little bit of that sin and justify it, it will spread to the whole church. That's why he tells us to purge out that leaven. But as a church, we have failed to apply this. And today we can see just how true that is. Over time, we've allowed this leaven in and it has changed the church. We are now at a point where those that want to apply these scriptures, they are the ones that are outcasted as if they are the ones that are not following the true faith. He then says, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. This simply meaning that you cannot escape dealing with these type of people. They are all in the world. We can't escape it in the world. That's why we are to be the salt of the earth, so that we can be the flavor that brings change. Show those who are not believers that there is another way. If we remove ourselves from everyone, then how does the world get changed? He continued clarifying, saying, But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, or covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. You see, he has told us not to keep company with the brother, one who claims belief in Yahshua, one who today would call him or herself a Christian. He told us not to keep company with them, not even to eat with them. He says, for what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside Elohim judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. Meaning, those who are on the outside are not saved. So what business do you have judging those who have not made a decision to follow Yahshua? In the end, Elohim will deal with them. But those that are on the inside, those who call themselves Christian, how do we not judge them? How do we not review the fruit of those who call themselves a believer? Those that are covetous, sexually immoral, idolaters, etc. How do we just let that grow inside the church? We are told to put away from ourselves this evil person. And if as a church we did this and applied it, we would have preserved the church better. But today, you cannot speak against sin without being called judgmental. You can't try to protect the church without being accused of being a hypocrite and not being a true believer. That's truly because the world is following the evil one, but thinks they are following Yahshua. That's because there is not a true understanding of our faith today. Just a lot of points taken out of context and hypocritical statement. Because listen to this true irony. The true irony is that those Christians that accuse us of being judgmental because we're speaking against sin are at the very same time being exactly what they are accusing us of. They're being judgmental. It's ridiculous. The Bible gives plenty of doctrine and structure on what to do if you are offended by another member of the church. Also, if there is a disagreement, there is protocol. It also tells us if we catch our brother doing certain things, do not associate with them and rebuke them. This will in turn make them stronger. Without an opinion against sin, Christians will live in acceptance to this world. We start living in tolerance of sin. A very big gift we need to use that we all have is discernment. Discernment comes from having the Holy Spirit tell us what's right or wrong for us, rather than the world and our traditions telling us what that is. Our opinions come from discernment. If you see your brother stumbling, are you not supposed to help them with it? If you think it's wrong and want them to understand why, to help save their soul or rebuke the devil, then you should speak your view. Never in a tone of condemnation, anger, or aggression, but in a tone of love and patience. If you are not able to do it in this way, then you must leave it alone until you are. Only in the devil's world does it make sense not to have an opinion on people's actions and lifestyles. Those that say, do not judge me, believe 
that we can do all that we want to do as long as we say that we believe in Jesus. It's like they say, don't judge me because I said I believe in Jesus. So who are you to judge how I sin? That's where we are today. This is because our society is transitioned into Satanism that promotes the satanic doctrine of do what thou wilt, do what you want. And so instead of a believer wanting help with walking more closely with our father, they tell you that as a believer, you don't have any place to comment. People are no longer seeking righteousness. They are no longer desiring to be pleasing in the sight of Elohim. They are looking to please themselves and do as they wish. They claim they love him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. Preserving his kingdom is not the priority more than being able to do what they want to do. When opinions go away, that means moral accountability is lost. This high thought of Christians not judging needs to be removed. Yahshua does not say, don't judge your brother if you have successfully removed the plank in your eye. He tells us we will be able to remove the speck out of our brother's eye because we have successfully removed that plank from our own. That is our charge to do as believers. But if you're still battling with the same issue as your brother or even worse, then of course you cannot judge or help on it. That's being a hypocrite. Believers today need to have opinions on everything they come in contact with. Gain discernment on all things. Take a stand against the devil and his works. Do not allow people to stay in bondage because they feel that you are not to judge. We are to judge everything by their fruits. Not in self-righteousness or with a desire of condemnation, but a desire of breaking the hold of the devil and bringing more strength within the church, individually and collectively. This is not about you being better than others. This is about protecting the church and preserving souls. It's not about you. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. In the very least, if we don't want to help others, we definitely should judge and discern for ourselves if the things we consume are right or wrong for us, if what we are accepting is right or wrong. The church is the steward of Elohim's kingdom. And we should be protective over it, not allowing a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. Now today, we are going to come across many that do not respect this message, because today, the world is under the sway of the wicked one. And he is telling people what our faith really should look like, and the people are listening, rather than letting the Bible, the word of Elohim, and his Holy Spirit be our guide. The devil is pulling out all tricks right now, trying to get us off our tracks. And he's trying to wear down the saints so that we don't want to fight against him. Do not let the devil break you down. Move as the Holy Spirit is convicting you. If it doesn't seem right to you, then speak up. You may be persecuted for it. You may come against strong rebuke. But stand up for the word of Elohim. We are not told that we are going to save the world. So you should expect that there will be some pushback. Your convictions may come upon strong rebuke and condemnation from the same people that are telling you not to rebuke and condemn. Stay prayed up. Do not grow weary in doing good. Rest upon the word of Elohim and know that it is our Father you are following and not the ways of this world. Protect the church. Protect Elohim's kingdom. Protect souls from the devil. Stand up for the truth. Preserve yourself and your family. Pray for the lost but also lead them into the truth. Be a true representative of Elohim, convicting the world of sin through using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, don't forget to like it and share it with others. I hope this provides more clarity on this subject. Share this with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you have not already done so, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and watch the History of Religion series. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. I would like to sincerely thank all those who support and pray for this ministry. I'm grateful for your prayers and your love and support. After my last message, I needed all the prayers that I can get, and I'm very thankful for all of you. All who support this ministry in your own way you truly make a difference in this ministry and assist me greatly with putting together these messages. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.
Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, everyone. Thanks again for watching. I love you all.